Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 631 Aussie Tech Heads. It's the 9th of May 2019. Don't forget to wish your mum a happy Mother's Day coming Sunday. Well, I'm your host, Glenn Goodman, and welcome to, yes, another weekly episode. We're uh, getting up there in the numbers now, aren't we? 631. Might be long before it's 6.32. Uh, we're joined tonight by Jordan and Joe, and I'll give you their email addresses for their contact. We'll be Jordan and Joe and Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. You can also catch Joe at Joe the Gadget Man at gmail.com. But you've got another one, haven't you, Joe? Yeah, no, just use that one. That's fine. Okay, Joe the Gadget Man at gmail.com. Uh, Aussie Tech Heads, we are brought to you by Start New Company. Look, I've got graphics there. Hang on. You want to see a graphic? Oh, no, not beer. There you go. <laughs> It's a graphic. Uh, startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company fast, easy, and direct with ASIC. All docs provided and docs held in your account for download at any time for later on. If you're an accountant or other professional, you're able to brand all documents with your company name. How, how exciting is that? So that's good. Go on, if you need a company, go and do that. And also, athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, so uh, we operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, and more. And I've got a graphic for that somewhere. Why can't I get graphics up? There we go. There's the website. That's what you see when you when you tune us up. And also Aussie Byte Clock Faces. If you go to the Aussie Byte Clock Face, which is in the Fitbit app gallery, uh, you can grab the an Aussie Byte uh, weather app or whatever that is the Aussie Bite Clock Face and get a 33% off thanks to Jace. Use the code ATH19 for 33% off. All right. So it looks like we've got a bit of circling on uh, on the Facebook. So let me show you. I'm going to try and uh, throttle something out here. So we'll see if that fixes things up. Uh, we'll go we'll do that and we'll just click on a couple of things. I know this is exciting, isn't it? So we'll click that as well. All right. Now let's get into... Uh, oh, you can also call us if you're watching live. You can call us. We do go live Thursday nights from 7.30, uh, from 6.30, 6.30 to 7, somewhere around there uh, on Facebook. Just keep watching the Facebook. Uh, you can call us. You can ring 02-8015-2088 and enter the meeting room 548-358-6358. I know I've got to get a website so you can uh, just go straight there if uh, you forget those. But, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. All right. So, uh, yes, got heaps to talk about this week. But also, also people talking are on the Aussie Tech Radio, uh, dot com. It's Walk to Walk 24-7 podcast, Australian tech podcast. You can get on your TuneIn Radio app, which is cross-platform, uh, which is iOS, Android, and on your desktop. So download TuneIn Radio and, uh, yeah, get involved. You can also like us on Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Look, the paper's still coming out, and that's at Aussie Tech Heads com dot forward slash paper and the show notes at aussietechheads.com.au dot forward slash podcast and uh, there's Twitter accounts and everything but you know who cares I don't check Twitter all right so uh, welcome uh, Jordan's first on this on the set tonight how are you going Jordan that's a first I know you were first in that's why oh on time not running late for a change it'll probably be the only time I'll ever be first then yeah how you been yeah good that's been good. a little bit busy with uh, custom building my road cases and boxes for my equipment and guitars and pedals and things like that all week yeah nice good stuff tomorrow night's gig yeah all right good to see that you're keeping busy see and trying to not as much time for tech these days as i'd like but i'm trying to get back into it Hmm. and uh joe hey joe hey glenn how you going yeah not too bad thanks what have you been up to mate i've been playing around with my um my little air mouse oh hello look at that it's like a little, it's like a little remote control for your Android box. So I only got this the other day, and uh, I'm just really keen to play with it and see how it goes. Yeah, nice, good stuff. Um, how did you go? What did you have last week? You bought something that you were going to play. I with. bought the Samsung Smart, Smart Things. I haven't set that up yet. You're right, right. So oh, that's cool. That'll be two reviews you owe us when you that's get around. That's right. When yep. you get around to it, good stuff. Don't forget to let us know, and we'll uh, link to your YouTube video, YouTube page as well. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Look, I, I, it's it's an Aussie um, version of the um, Samsung Smart Things Wi-Fi system. Mm. It comes with the with the Samsung Hub, and that's got a built-in um, like a Zigbee and Z-Wave device. But the Australian uh, radios in them, so the Australian version. Right. So, yeah. I'll be. Uh, I haven't had a chance this last week, but I will be putting it um, putting it to use this week, and um, I'll do a little review on it. 
Yeah, nice, nice work. Now, we're just talking about gadgets and stuff. Stuff. Um, I, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it was the US only, but in actual fact, it is in Australia. Uh, if you've got a Spotify family account, or if you subscribe, or if you sign up to a Spotify family account, uh, they'll send you, or Google will send you, a free Google Mini. Did you guys know about that? Um, no, no, I didn't. Um, so, so, but that's the um, the Google Mini, the, this one with no screen, right? That's correct. Yeah, the one. Yes. So, I think what is it, forty dollars? If you want to go buy it. So, um, yeah, there you go. So, because I thought when I first read it, I thought, oh yeah, that's just the US. I didn't see anything about uh, Australia. And then it was one of the listeners that, after all, he mentioned it, and I think someone might have even posted it to the Facebook page. Uh, one of our listeners, Adrian, contacted me and said he ordered it. And I went, oh, how sweet's that? So I jumped on board as well. I thought, well, I'll get one too. So um, you've got to have the family account. Uh, you got to, you better hurry up because you've got to get it uh, by, you've got to have it ordered by the 14th of May. And they must be redeemed by the 31st of May. So there's links in the show notes. And just go there and, uh, yeah, get involved if you want a free Google Mini. So what the what the procedure is, is that they, <clears throat> they'll, uh, you, you get it, you get a code. And then you go to the, the Google store, they'll link it to the Google store with the Google Mini. You put the code in, I think Google want to charge you 70, put the code in, brings it back to zero, put your address in, check out, and away you go. So um, I haven't got mine yet, but uh, I think I did it probably only about a week ago, and I've got the email to say it's on its way. So yeah, all good. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, it's a good little device. I mean, you know, powerful Yeah. Um, for, for what it is. You'd be surprised on how good the sound comes out on one of those. Yeah, they're not too bad. Like I got one upstairs, so now I can put one downstairs. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to buy another one, so I did see that I didn't buy this one. That's good. <laughs> I'll be able to use it. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I've got another little surprise for you guys later on too, to do with Spotify again. I guess and not two Spotify stories, but this one I think you guys will really like. Uh, but we'll get a couple of stories under our belt first. Uh, let me go. I'll, I'll start off. Let's go. Oh, this is probably not too much of a tech story, but did you see the one this week? about the new $50 note with a spelling mistake on it. Did you hear no, about that? No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, so an anonymous tips, tipster, so someone that probably, you know, like a banknote uh, expert or lover, uh, they, you know, they've, they've gone over the new $50 note and there's the word responsibility is spelt wrong. So the RBA has confirmed that the word, word responsibility is incorrectly spelled responsibility. So that's, shocking to say the least that is so bad uh so the error is it, it's near microscopic quote printed above edith cowan's shoulder it appears three times in a row apparently uh the total value of the misprinted note was is 2.3 billion so the rba issued a statement on thursday morning saying it was aware of the typo and it would be corrected in the next print run but geez what a mistake that's that's embarrassing like Someone should probably get the sack for that, I reckon. And I don't know who, but I think oh, it just annoys me these days. There's no accountability. Like I wouldn't like to be the person that got the sack because of it, but I guess if you make something like that, that's, that's no good. It is not known yet how long the RBA has been aware of the error. Now, the Australian banknote author, Mick Vaught Ronald, said printing errors were common, but typos were not. He said he had never seen this before in his 43 years of writing about banknotes. Uh, you have to ask whose responsibility is to check the spelling, he said. He said some errors were worth thousands of dollars, but that this note was unlikely to be worth more than 50 bucks. Uh, reason being because there was uh, $2.3 billion worth of them printed, which is quite a few. Uh, and he, yeah, so that's what, everyone's got one of the, the, the bad, the misspelt ones, so that's why they're not worth anything. But before I read that part of it, I dived straight into my wallet. Didn't have any, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to see, because I've got to put it aside, because you know you hear about stamps, you know mis misprinting on stamps and all this sort of stuff, how they worth money. Um, but yeah, I didn't have one. But uh, be interesting to see one though. Next one I get, I might get the microscope out. But um, yeah, that's pretty bad. No good. No good at all. But that was just something I just came across this week, and uh, yeah, thought it interesting. If nonetheless, they should have employed the uh, a uh, maybe the Microsoft Microsoft Clippy. Maybe he should have been around for the spell check. You know, he might have jumped up and down and said, have you uh, checked your spelling yet? It uh, might have saved him a lot of embarrassing embarrassing moments. But anyway, um, all right. Joe, where did you want to take us first this week? Um, 
I've got this um, story about Google uh, revealing that only 10% of its uh, devices are only using Android 9 after eight after nine months that it's been released. So Android 9 Pi, the new operating system, there's only like 10% of the devices using it after right. nine months that it's been released. I mean, you would think that there would be a lot more than that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's so nine is the latest one. Yeah, and it's been out for the last nine months, but apparently I reckon only 10% of the devices out there have got it. Right. Have, have you updated yours? Well, I can't really because my manufacturer of my phone hasn't given me the option to do that. And I think that's half the problem. A lot of the manufacturers are not updating some of their devices. I'm, I'm thinking that I think most Samsungs, I think, um, I'm pretty sure um, Jordan, the, um, the Pixel does as well, doesn't it? Yep. So, yep. <laughs> sorry, I've been fixing a computer. The Pixel has the 9 on it. Yeah, does the Pixel have the 9? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, a version, a later version of 9, although it only just updated recently, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so that's... Um, it's a few bugs as they always get when they update. Yeah, so there's only a few devices out there that have it at the moment. Apparently, um, the Oreo is still um, the largest of the uh, uh, OSs out there uh, with a 28.3% um, customer base. But that's got that's that's with uh, Android 8 and Android 8.1. That's followed by Android Nougat at 19.2 percent, and mm. that's for versions 7 and 7.1. Um, they go along to say that some people are still using Android 6 right. uh, Marshmallow at 16.9 percent, and my old phone, my old NEC, sorry NEC. Uh, LG, um, LG G3 phone, the manufacturer, LG, stopped updating that at version 6. So, Ooh, That's yeah. getting old. Well, yeah, it's an older phone, but still they stopped there. I mean, and that's half the problem. Manufacturers stop upgrading. Yes, yeah, that's right. And that's probably the reason why there's not much of the, not much upgrading going on. I think my Xiaomi, I think I'm up to 9 because I'm the, on the, is it the Google One where they just push out the updates regardless? Well, that's right. Yeah, even my phone is supposed to have that Google One system installed on it, but it doesn't do it for some reason. Hmm. Well, so, yeah, because when I turn mine on, mine comes up Google One. Does yours not come up with the display Google One? No, it doesn't. It just uh, comes up with uh, the um, Android, uh, what is it, uh, 8.1, I think it comes up with. Oh, yeah. right. No, I don't even get the version. I, I only know the version because it's in the... You know, when I go settings update or something, it says what version I'm on. Um, yeah. So yeah, because I know I, I update mine as soon as I can. I think I think the the, the the every time I update, I think the phone does go a little bit slower. But I think that's I think that's to be expected. But I, th I think you're right, Joe. I think uh, the telcos, yeah, they they don't care. Once the phone a couple of years old, they're not interested in providing updates for it. And for some reason, that's how Androids were sold, weren't they? Like the the carriers can lock the phone, lock the the iOS down, so you can't do nothing without them pushing it through. So. Well, I think it's more got to do with the carriers or with the um, the companies that run them, like you know LG and all those other companies. I mean, there's nothing saying you know, Google doesn't say to them, "Hey, don't upgrade it any longer." It's up to them to be able to su support that, you know. Yeah. So I remember yeah. when I, I you can probably go ahead and get some third party, you know. ROMs and, and upgrade it via that. Mm. That'll, that'll work. I think I, I did an old one years ago this, with the Cyanogen mod, and uh, that worked all right for a bit, and then the phone just totally carked it. But yeah. yeah that, that, that no longer now um, is, is around now. There's a new name for that now. I think it's called something OS something or other. Okay. Yeah, so, so I guess like if you've got an old phone that's what languishing on uh, Android six or seven well maybe there's a you know a, a, I'll call it a cyanogen mod or a third party mod or ROM that you'd be able to just load into the phone and uh, yeah you'd be able to yeah bring it up to a bit of speed so to speak up to date anyway at least but, uh, but how often do you put your updates on or you you got to wait Joe until you get the until you get the update through yeah what I normally do is I normally wait for the um, updates to come up on the phone and every now and then, I actually go to the website 
and see whether there's been a release in between. Because sometimes uh, they do have a release in between, but for some reason it doesn't work over the air or, or, or uh, you don't actually get the update. Mm. Uh, a lot of the times you will have to also plug in your phone and just use their software. Like I know that for LG, um, it, unless I actually went into the website and downloaded their, their LG suite, the, um, the, then it told me, oh, you got an update. So that would be another way. So if you're using one of the older phones um, and you say you've got Samsung or LG or any of the other brands, um, go into their website and use their software and you might find you might be able to get an update that way. Mm. Yeah, we're desperate for updates. <laughs> I do them as soon as they come out. Uh, security updates, I think I get most of the time, but yeah, every now and then. Uh, That's the other one I was thinking of. Lineage, Lineage OS is another one. How do you spell that? L-I-N-E-A-G-E OS. Let's see if I can get a, uh, a Google on that so yeah. I can see what that looks like. That one there is um, took over some Synergen mob. Yeah, I think uh, I think we have seen this. I've seen this page. I think we must have spoke about this earlier. We have, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Anything you want to add there, Jordan? No, not at the moment, mate. No, just um... I've, been, just I've been sitting here, kind of listening and not listening. Just uh, my computer almost crashed on me, so I've been. Oh, right. I just had you know typical edge open with too many tabs. Now tell me, you know, I know you love the media. Uh, what, what, what's that? What's that free? Uh, the, the NAS software you've got? Uh, Open Media Vault. Yeah, I know you love Open Media Vault. You did it, didn't you? No, not yet. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying. I was waiting for it. I was like, I, was, I thought you were going to say you've done it. You did it. No, well, I'm still on the free NAS. Free NAS, aren't you? But I wanted to uh, extend my pool of drives, but it's very hard because it uses the ZFS. I don't know, file yes, system. Right. Well, it, there is a plug-in for ZFS in Open Media Vault, so you can um, bring the ZS, ZFS drives to Open Media Vault. Yeah, but can you uh, like how? So when so so when you're on Open Media Vault, can you expand your pool by adding drives? Uh, I, I I haven't done it, but I think so. I, mm. I, well, I don't know. I'm not. Look, I, I'd be guessing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because that's the pro I, that's the problem. I usually I'm... don't run raids and pools and things. I usually just mirror everything because I don't know. It just kind of everybody says that raids are good, but I'm always I'm just almost I'm always nervous that if the raid breaks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the ZFS it gives you the a, a driver's parity, so you, so you can have the redundancy, which is really really good. But I've just had I've just been struggling to try and figure out how to put another one or two drives into the system yeah, and extend the pool. But apparently, under the ZFS raid, you can't. Pretty do sure it. you can do it with normal the DXT ones, but I don't maybe. Know that. But anyway, well, if that's if we're only guessing, we won't. But jump. in saying that, I mean, as my opinion, as I just said. What do you do if a raid breaks? Well, in my case, with the ZFS, well, I just take the busted drive out and put it, put another one in. No, but what if the actual raid itself breaks? Uh, I don't know. I haven't haven't had it break. You're not supposed to You're think about like that, Jordan. No, supposed... that's no. what I'm saying. That's what always makes me nervous. Like, because I always, I, always, I always mirror, or whatever you call the, the correct terminology for mirror is... Um, um, but yeah, I always have you know two of the same, right? Or three of the same, because I always think to myself, if I put you know four or five drives in a raid, mm. and they're all linked together, yes, you can pull one out, put another one in, and it fixes it. But what if the actual yeah you know, the whole the, structure becomes corrupt or something? Yeah, right? no, the the actual raid itself that that can, brings all these drives yeah. together. Yes, yeah, I don't know enough about it, but that always made me nervous. I always thought, well. As much as you've got five drives, it's really only one because it's bringing them all together. If that That's whole right. thing fails, you still lose. Well, you still, so you'd still have to back it. up your raid as well, wouldn't you? Well, I've got back. I've got a local backup, but it's only backed up every couple of months. That's the thing. So but just then, of the files, not of the raid. That's right, just of the files. But then again, I do cloud back up the files anyway. Oh, but not mm. videos. But 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 yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, I use um, as you know, uh, duplicate. Duplicati, Duplicati, whatever you want to call it. We du always same as Ducati. Du Ducati, yeah. We, we I, I use that, and then I have my remote ones are only certain files, so I back up locally everything mm. from one drive to another. But then remotely, it's only yeah, not always the big stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, um, 
look, just moving on then, because uh, that's a, that, that's another problem for me for another day. I'm going to have a bit of a cry about that by the sounds of it. Uh, look, I was talking to Mark. Remember Mark from way back in the early days? Yeah, he's still he's still he's still around, still kicking. G'day, Mark. I was just talking to him before the show, and uh, and we we're just talking about Spotify and stuff. And he's like he, he he's. I don't know, you might have too much time on your hands, Mark, but you've done us all a favour, I'll tell you. He's, he's got all these playlists on Spotify, and I'll tell you how you can share them. But remember all the old compilations through the 80s, like the hit machines and all that sort of stuff? So, oh, Mark, yeah. yeah. Mark's gone around, and he's he's got the song lists off each of these albums, and then went and playlisted them all in the Spotify. And I'll show you, like, this is only some of it of what he's done. That's only one screenshot. But that's how he's he said it out. He's done a magnificent job. <laughs> so I said, I'll have a look at that. I'll, I'll subscribe to that. So if you want to subscribe to his playlist, his just chunk of playlist with all these songs, uh, all from the 80s and the 90s, uh, you just have to search up MDJ Salza. So M-D-J-S-A-L-T-Z-E-R and follow him on Spotify. And uh, you'll get all his playlists. So he's That's just, awesome. I know. Remember, awesome. The old, remember the old hit machine. Yeah, how good is that? Like that is so good. That is awesome. Yeah. So he said he there's not too many songs he couldn't find on the Spotify. So um he's there's a lot there. Oh, he's he's done a ma- mountain of work, a mountain of work. Because I know I, yeah. I started putting together top 100 playlists of years, and I did six years. And I thought this is a lot of work. <laughs> so I've, I've had to bail on it. But yeah, so you've done well, Mark. Good work. Good stuff. Yeah. So follow him up on Spotify and yeah, get your 80s and 90s fix for sure. And I, I told him about you, Joe. I said you might be interested in that. Yeah. No, that, that, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told him you'd put on a, you'd be known to put on a few discos. So <laughs> it's good. Do you, my, do you know what my very first album I ever bought? You probably remember this name, this one. It's called Disco Dazzler. Do you remember that album? <laughs> no, I don't remember it. No, what was on that? Oh, there was all the seventies uh, disco hits, you know, going back from the BGS and and uh, Donna Summer and uh, things like that. Yeah, right. Disco Dazzler. I'm just going to see if I can <laughs> if I can Google that. There it is. That does come up. Let's see if we can get a, a cover art for us to have a look at. Oh, yeah, look at that, eh? Macho Man, Rivers of Babylon. Everyone's a winner. Oh, how good are these all, songs? I know every one. All the classic, all the classics are there. I don't know about Let's All Chant, the Michael Zager band. I don't know about that oh, one. Oh, that's another classic, that song. Is it? I might might oh, know yeah. it if I hear it. But I wonder the if... Option. Well, I'll have to look through Mark's playlist later to see if he has got the Disco Dazzler. <laughs> there. And if not, Mark, if you listen to the show, can you put it on, please? Joe would appreciate it into into that massive playlist of yours. But yeah, so that's really good. So um, I've had a good chance to look ex- entirely through that, but I'll tell you what. That is going to be fantastic. All right, um, let's go to. I found a story th- uh, through the week. Optus most likely RSP to suffer a fixed line outage. So I guess I, I picked this story out because uh, I'm still not on the MBN and looking around for potentials, potential RSPs. And I don't think Optus is going to fall into the into the box. Uh, I've got a couple of yeah. Look, I've got a little graph here. So what it does is uh, Optus fixed line internet apparently is more than three times as likely to suffer an outage than the rest of them. So the ACCC uh, did a report and it's called the Measuring Broadband Australia Report which was released this week and for the first time covered the average number of outages that lasted more than 30 seconds for each major retail service provider. So I guess you you can go, oh well the outage for 30 seconds is not a lot. But I guess it's still an outage, isn't it? And if you can find uh, providers that don't have as many, even though they're small outages, well, all the better. Uh, Optus, yeah, as you can see in this graph, Optus is like head and shoulders and then some, and then triple that again ahead of all the others. Uh, so they were, they came in at the average daily outages at, say, 1.5, and then I think the lowest was about point. I'd have to say that about point one, My Republic. So the good ones were Telstra coming pretty low, TPG low, My Republic low. Um, but yeah, Optus was a, a dead set standout there. So each each Optus dropped us. Yeah, each uh, each RSP was able to keep its number of daily outages below point five. Yeah, with the exception of Optus, reached one point six outages per day in February. Now other graphs that this report showed us 
was the average download performance for each telco. Uh, so they were all pretty much the same on the average download speed. So there's nothing to nothing to really see there. I don't have the graph, sorry, for that. If you go to the show notes, you'll be able to see these graphs and link to the actual story. And latency. Uh, the iinet had a big latency. Uh, the best latency or the lowest latency would have been, looks like Exitel. Telstra was pretty good and TPG was pretty good. Aussie Broadband, not so bad. Um, but iinet looks like they were uh, a bit dodgy there. Yeah, so... Uh, I oh, know, so I still haven't got the MBN honours yet, but it's coming, it's coming. I think I'm going to do Aussie Broadband. It's coming. I was going to do Fetch. You guys got Fetch? Yes, I have. That's right, you do, haven't you, Joe? So so tell me, that, so that's $15 a month plus a package. Is that how that works? Uh, you get the basic package for $15 a month, and then if you want anything other than that, they've got other little packages at 5 or $6 a month, you know? Right. How do you find the PVR side of it works? Okay. Yeah, it works very good. Yeah, all I right. I haven't had an issue. The only time you have an issue is if you're trying to record two or three programs at the same time um, on different channels. It might it might uh, not like that. Right. What sort of fetch box have you got? I have the black one with the little blue light in the front, the two blue lights at the front. Is that the Mighty? No, it's not the Mighty. I think the Mighty is the big one. Um, oh, this is right. just the, almost the squarish looking one. I think it's version two. And... It- is that locked to Optus? Yes, it is. Right, okay. All these things I'm f- figuring out. Uh, yeah, and an- another tip I'll give any of listeners, if you do see in um, in eBay or, you know, Gumtree or anything like that, uh, an Optus box for someone wanting to sell an Optus box under the Optus brand, I would suggest you buy it. Don't buy it. You just can't turn it on and uh, expect to use it. Right. It's got to go through Optus. Um, and they've got to go ahead and that's been locked to some sort of an account at some point and you've got to get that unlocked and it's not an easy way to do it so although you might get it cheap um, it, there's a bit of a procedure and, and that goes for a lot of um, routers uh, like wireless routers and modems that are uh, released by customers that no longer need them and things like that don't go buying them either yeah because I, I, I did look on Gumtree and saw the, the you know the the uh, fetch boxes and stuff and yeah they're locked to Optus and all this and I well, like obviously can't do that so that was out of the, my my thing anyway but yeah I, yeah you always get a bit concerned about that sort of stuff don't you what like, if things yeah, are locked there is, there is other fetch boxes that you can buy and they are um, actually I think the fetch brand themselves you might be able to get those ones there and then those ones there are normally unlocked and you can then put a code in right. and unlock it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if you to buy the fetch box from like uh, the good guys or somewhere, it's about four hundred and fifty bucks. They're not yeah, cheap. Yeah, that's right. And, and they, that's right. But they, but they're unlocked, so you can use them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So they're not cheap. But uh, all right. Um, what else have you got for us, Joe? Um, the other thing I was going to talk about today was that Google's bringing out a new phone, the Pixel Three A. Um, it's a mid-range phone. Um, and, it, and it's got a, a top of the line camera for about three ninety nine. Nice. Yeah. So as you would ex- as you would one would expect, the cheaper version of the Pixel, um, it's called the three uh, A and a three A XL. It's got a, a plastic back on it instead of the glass back. Right. Uh, what else to come? It's got a cheaper SOC instead of the flagship Snapdragon eight four five. Right. It's got no water damage resistance, so it does, you know you've got to keep it away from the water. This particular model has also no wireless charging, and it's a downgrade to the front camera. Instead of using a, a normal plus wide angle dual front camera setup, you just get the normal um, the normal camera in the front. Mm. So this little slide that I just put up here. Uh, it's got it's a it's a it's a split screen of a picture the same picture taken with a phone X and the same picture taken with a Pixel 3a side by side. The phone X is really dark. The Pixel 3a is a bit lighter, not too bad. But uh, I just wanted to ask that when it says phone X, are they talking about the iPhone, or is there an Android phone called the phone X? Do you know? Uh, they're talking about I think the X, which is the XL. You might be missing the L. The XL. Oh, okay. So you've got the A, um, 
the X and then the XL, which is the extra large version. Oh, okay, right. He's talking about the screen size and that. Um, basically, the uh, the 3A has a uh, a 5.6 inch screen. Yep. It's a nice screen, and it's got a 3,000 milliamp battery. Uh, the the bigger Pixel 3A um, XL gets a six inch screen, and it's got a, an OLED screen as well with a 3,700 milliamp battery. Both have um, both devices have a, a two gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 processor in them, right? With four gigs of RAM, and they both got the 64 gigabyte of storage, um, which is not too bad. I mean, you know, so a lot of people don't need all that much storage. Mm. It does come with a USB port as well, but you don't get NFC. Oh, uh, right. yes. Sorry, you do get NFC. Oh, okay. You Good. still get the stereo speakers. Uh, it also still comes with the squeezable active sides. Yeah. Uh, that calls up the Google Assistant when you squeeze it. And this one here also has a eSIM. You know, remember we talked about it a few months back about the eSIM that yes. they they have um, with uh, with the phones. So this has got like a it, it's like a dual SIM. So one's like a standard SIM, and the other one's got an eSIM, electronic SIM. Yes. Um, and it's also got the ambient um, always on display screen, which is like the Samsung as well. It's got the timer on the front. Yeah. So it's uh, it's got that as well. Yeah, okay. And the other thing about this phone is it comes with a 3.5 inch, um, sorry, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, something that the Pixel doesn't come with. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I just went. I was just interested to see what price it was for us in Australia. And yeah, you're right. That that photo I was talking about. Yeah, they did. They forgot the L. Well, how confusing is this? So, <laughs> but then why would they? Why would they want to be? showing that off but anyway um in australia in the google store australia the google pixel 3a 649 so that's a um, bit of a hike up there isn't it from the 399 yeah look i, I was I was actually i should have said i was quoting u.s prices there yeah so, so let's say th- was it 399 400 so say it's 130 so that's 530 say australian uh plus gst another 50 so that's 600 yeah i guess so i guess it probably works it comes close Probably factored in a bit of a bit of cushioning, just in case the the dollar goes south a bit more. But um, but yeah, but yeah, that doesn't look like a bad phone though, Joe. So yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I don't know. Um, Jordan's got the original Pixel phone. I don't know how what his thoughts are on the um, this new A version, three A version. So, I haven't looked at it to be honest. I haven't looked at them at all. But I did read an article that they're their sales were declining a little bit in Pixel. I haven't upgraded mine even to a Pixel. I'm still on the original. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Do you find um, that it's slowing? It's something you might be interested in then. Have a look at the specs on this one. They're not too bad. Mm. No, it's... I must admit it's slowed a little bit just in the last update, but it just seems to be Google getting their head around updates. They, they update it, and, and usually after an update, you get a few more little updates just to fix the little bucks of bugs that they... To come out with those updates yeah and then kind of everything starts to come good but there's a couple of you know like for example um you know like i was looking at the browser screen earlier and you know the, the browser screen the screen is white and on on the um on the pixel you've got like a little back arrow and at the bottom of your screen and the home button which is on the screen it's not not a digital one but because it's white as well you can't see the back buttons on the pages it's just little stupid things like, yeah yeah, but so, the uh, the new ones look really nice. But yeah, I haven't heard I haven't heard a lot about them. So would you would you or either you guys be buying a phone uh, without the RFD chip in them? Now those like that. If you were interested in a phone, would you be if it, if that was would that be a deal breaker? Uh, if it didn't have the RF chip on the back. Yeah. My my previous phone did have it, and I had that phone for about what three or four years. And you know, I very rarely used it. Um, I, be, I did go ahead and buy the little tiles, the little RF tiles, so that I can strategically place them around the place, and and get some benefit out of having the RF chip in it. Mm. But it was more of a hassle than anything else to set that up, so I didn't bother with it. The new phone I have now, um, the Qbot Power, it doesn't come with a RF chip on it. So, and I haven't missed it. So, I, I guess. And you know that's more for when you're buying online and stuff. And I don't do any buying online or yeah, 
you know, with with the with the with the phone itself at at a, at a point of sale, I don't do any of that either. Yeah, because because my Xiaomi doesn't have it, and I'm just thinking that you know maybe because. Uh, more, more all the banks just now you know everyone's starting to get on board it's all starting to happen and i'm thinking oh i don't know I'd, I'd like to maybe give it a shot see how it goes but uh maybe i'll get one next time see how it goes what about you excuse me excuse yeah. me for being, sounding stupid and not yeah. being up with it as i said i'm a bit slow with tech these days but rf chip or the new what? nfc oh it's nfc is it yeah yeah nev- i never even used nfc yeah right okay so like, you- i mean i've got that in my watch and everything and i just haven't Oh, yeah, right. look, with, with, with regards to NFC, what I was trying to do when I had my, my LG phone, and I bought a few of these NF, uh, NFC tiles, and the idea behind me buying them was that you could strategically place them. For example, you can get a tile and place it on your bedside table, and you place the phone on that tile or near that tile, and it'll do things for you. Like, okay, well, now, um, once that happens, uh, Use you know sort of sort of some programming where it would turn off the light, it would turn on the radio, um, activate the alarm. Um, then another scenario I was going to try and use it for was when you get in the car and you have these wireless chargers in oh, the yeah. car. Yeah. Yeah. So you have that sitting up beside the wireless charger. Um, as soon as you put your phone in the cradle, um, the NFC chip behind picks it up and it right. turns the Bluetooth on, turns it off, and, and, and whatever else, turns the Wi-Fi off. It does all these other things, you know. That's the sort of thing I was trying to to play around with. Mm. But uh, to, to set it up and to program it to do things like that, it was uh, a, a bit hard for me back then. I don't know what it's like today, but back then, this is this is before all the smart things came out, you know, where, where all the smart things did all the things. So, yeah, but I think... Um, yeah, so because I think you your next story, Joe, we might as well go into that because that's probably along the same sort of lines. Um, your that story about your ift. Um, so yeah, look, um, Google, as, as people know, Google purchased um, the Nest product uh, back in two thousand and fourteen. Um, it announced that it would um, tighter integration um, of the brand into its hardware division over at Google. Um, I O this year, and it would include the rebranding of the Google Home Hub um, as the Google Nest Hub, right. and the announcement of the new larger Nest Hub Max. Um, right. That new that new news found um, closeness is coming at, at a cost. You know, it's, this sort of integration is coming at a bit of a cost for some people. Mm. Um, apparently. The Nest devices will lose the IFTTT support in August this year, at the end of August this year. Um, that's if this, then that support. So if you use that app, if this, then that, apparently if you've got a Nest product and you've got that integrated with if uh, if this, if, then that, yep. <laughs> yeah, at the end of uh, the August this year, 31st of August, they are going to announce that they're going to shut down that service. So um, is there any reasoning why? Like why they want well, to apparently close. apparently Google is saying that it's got to do with security, but um, okay, that's a bit of a baloney. I think I think it's more got to do with trying to, uh, you know, keep everyone in house. You know, when you know that because mm. at the moment Nest accounts are, um, uh, are also able to be used by Amazon and and some other companies as well. Yeah, um, right. So, so therefore. Google's asking people who have Nest account to migrate over to Google accounts, right? Um, as the company um, is going to be retiring um, the works with the Nest API in August. Yeah, so okay. If, if you have any Nest products still running with I, IFTTT or if this does that uh, mm. integration um, on your current Nest product, it, it's going to stop working. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's no good because that ift like, um, have you ever used the ift, Joe? I, I have installed the app on my phone and I haven't actually used it. Um, I haven't had a need to use it at the moment. Mm. Um, it does most of the things that I want it to do. Uh, without, well, I can I can do most of the things I want to do without it at the moment. Yeah. What about but you? That's more for specifics. You know, more for specific things that you want it to do. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? Have you used the ift before? No. Have you heard of it? No, it's pretty. It's good. I've used it. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you a little about how I've used it. I'll show you the website again. Is your um, I must ask you: Is your feed cutting in and out, or is it just me? I think it is that feed. I can see that it's having trouble tonight, this week. 
I, I have noticed the Facebook feed um, feed every now and then pauses. Yeah, I think it's having trouble. I'm not sure. It's saying interruption. Yeah. I just went to my kid for playing games while I was doing the show with you, but it's probably not him. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my kids. I'll have to get. I'll have to get the the wife the router to be uh, turned off. But anyway, getting back to this if. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's so as Joe was saying, it was if. If then, if that, then this. So what happens is uh, they're called recipes, and there's a lot of ones that are already pre-made for you, if you like. So, uh, so say for example, uh, you get a recipe there. So whenever this one here on the screen that I've got here, tweet your Instagrams as a native Twitter photo. So there's a if there's an Instagram fo- if if someone posts Instagram photo to you, uh, then post it to Twitter. Things like that. So if if an event happens, then go and do another event. Uh, I used to do it with the with the show. So like if there was a uh, a, a Facebook post uh, of a if there was a YouTube a new YouTube if there was a new YouTube, then post to Facebook and post to Twitter and things like that. So it just automates things for you. So it's not too bad. It's free, I think, isn't it? I don't, can't see any pricing. Yeah, it's it's free to use. It does a lot of you know little things like. If I get an email from such and such a person, then I want you to um, send me a message via text message and also notify someone else by email as well. It's got all this functionality built into it. So if this, then that. If you can think about it, it's a, if this happens, then do this. That's yeah. basically what that app has got to do. And so look at this one here that I've just found. It's just on their website. looks like you know, if Domin- with Domino's app, uh, turn on the porch lights when the pizza's on its way things like that so that's what you'd be into Joe uh, making all that turn lights on and off as well just from apps that's cool that's right yeah but I'm actually now I'm actually looking at Samsung smart things which is a little easier to use than that yeah so right. once I get that up and running it'll be really cool because because Samsung smart this smart things um, app does very similar to this not as sophisticated mm. and not um, in, in in how can I call it not it hasn't got as many products and services that it that if this then that can do, right? But, um, it's a lot easier to use. It's more just click and click and and, and push, you know, it's, rather than trying to program things with um, if this then that. What about this one? Get a notification when the International Space Station passes over your house. <laughs> How cool <laughs> is that? Eh? Yeah. Automated. Well, that's the sort of things you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rain today. Don't forget an umbrella. Yeah, it's all that sort of stuff. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, did you finish with that one, Joe? Yeah, just the last thing I want to say is that um, the Nest products will retain Google Assistant integration. So if you currently got it um, working with Google Assistant, then Google Assistant will allow you to keep working with your Nest products. Mm. Um, but uh, if you've got, um, if this, then that integrated within it, what you should do is you should transfer the data to your Google account, um, and then um, readjust all your routines and actions so that everything works okay again. Right, right. All right, well, take heed if you've got a, one of those Google nesty things. Uh, all right, so do you guys, Jordan, do you, do you drink bottled water? Uh, uh, yeah, a bit of it. Yeah? Although I hear it's not good for your teeth. Oh, really? I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the well, bottle. I've heard or... that, you know, I don't know. I remember reading something yeah, right. about that. There's things in the normal tap water that kind of is good and okay. not good. I don't know. What, what about you, Joe? You don't quote me. Huh? Water drink water bottles from a water bottle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's this I one? Also I also drink water from a tap as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't care. But how's this one? This is. A... Well, we're lucky in this country that we can. Yes, yeah. Uh, there's this site, this one here. There's Tech Brothers Drink Liquid Death. Now, I thought, hello, what's Liquid Death? That sounds uh, quite uh, intriguing. So the product, which is the brainchild of a former Netflix creative director, Mike Cesario, is a non-carbonated, unflavoured water sourced and canned in the Alps and packaged in tall boy cans. It's water. That's all it is. According to Liquid Death site, the beverage lets you murder your thirst. It also has natural electrolytes and minerals and sells, and this would be a US price, $12.96 for a 12 pack. Crazy. How is that rubbish going? I think I'd feel like that guy there if I, if I paid that. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, it's a video. 
That's a dollar a can. Let's play this. See what see what the video's about. Yeah. So uh oh my oh jeez. Can I you get can go get... down to Coles and you can buy what is it? Well, they're $6 for 24 or something, isn't it? Oh, something like that, yeah. So um, on, on this week, the company announced an additional $1.6 million in funding from other tech world types, including Biz Stone and Jen Rubio. According to the Washington Post, bottled water was the most successful mass marketing beverage category in 2018, nearly 14 billion gallons sold. As of now, you can only buy liquid death online. There you go. Get some liquid death into you. But isn't that crazy? Like, is it just people have got too much money? Or, or what's going on? Just too much money. What, 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 so, what was that? So, uh, 12 pack. So, it's nearly $2 a can. Jeez. You say 12 pack was $12, you said, didn't you? Uh, 21 dollars $22. Oh. I thought you said it was twelve dollars for twelve cans. No, twenty one. So it's just it's, well, that's worse then, isn't it? Yeah, that's out of control. But anyway, it is worse. Well, like I said, you can go to Coles and buy, you know, twenty four or something for about that. Yeah, but imagine, like but, so, it's not. But even then, you know, they keep saying they're all from the mountains and this and that, but they're all just filtered, put bottled and sold, and put a label and told told you they come from the mountains. They yeah. probably don't. I remember that episode. Now, you guys have probably wouldn't have even heard the show, but I remember an episode of Only Fools and Horses, and uh, the Dell boy went up and started bottling water from some some little spout that started spouting out the top of the rubbish tip hill or something. <laughs> he was selling the water in town, and that's all it is. He was selling it as, uh, you know, bloody um, glacial flowing water, and uh, yeah, but that's all it is. That's, that's just rubbish. But imagine opening up a can, and it's not even carbonated. Like that'd be it's just a strange thing in itself, don't you think? Like just you go, nothing. Yeah, it wouldn't pop, would it? It'd yeah. just be a click rather than a. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now my last story for this week is a a big year for esports. So game is to send on Sydney for the IEM, which is the Intel Extreme Masters. So gamers from around Australia and overseas converged on Sydney earlier in the week as part of an international competitive video gaming tournament that uh, is apparently uh, rapidly becoming one of the country's top esports events. It was on between April 30 and May 5 at the Kudos Bank Arena in Sydney, drawing thousands of spectators and uh, to the stadium and millions more watching online. So 16 teams three from Australia took to the stage players from U- USA the UK Brazil Holland and Sweden uh, apparently a strongly contested grand final the US team Liquid defeated the Swedish team Fnatic uh, 3-2 in a best of five scenario and they scored 143,000 in prizes so that's not a bad coin uh, Australia played out against the UK uh, Australia won so that was good and a, it was all about a first-person shooter Overwatch was included in the lineup as part of the Overwatch Contenders Series 1 finals. Melbourne-based team Order defeating the Sydney Drop Bears. Uh, there's about 8,000 visitors each day at the 260,000 concurrent viewers streaming the event online at one point, with a total viewership exceeding last year and likely to be somewhere in the region of 15 million viewers. There's a picture. There you go. There's a little bunch of dudes sitting at computer screens so i think earlier this year we, when the australian open was on they were having some sort of fortnight competition weren't they uh well, they down... always do yeah right right so lots uh, of them. sorry lots of the fort they always have fortnight online ones and prizes to be won at all the time mm. it seems to be like um yeah getting bigger, like and bigger. Fortnite at the moment because of the movie endgame apparently all the characters look like the avengers <laughs> Ah, right, right. Oh, they're always on to something. They're always yeah trying to keep it interesting. But I don't know, if, like if you went to the stadium where this was taking place, would you get? The, do you reckon there'd be any adrenaline rush? You know, like it's not really sports. It's uh, I don't know. I, I maybe if you get get the the final two in a grand final as a one on one shooter, I suppose you'd pick a side and and go for them, wouldn't you? I guess you get something out of it if you're a fan of the game. But yeah. I prefer the drone racing. That looks that's much better, isn't it? You seen that robot wars on the TV? That's pretty cool. As well. Yeah, I have seen that. They smash each other up. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
Uh, all right. We build their robots and then they smash them. I suppose it's probably no different to flying remote control airplanes. They build all those things and spend all these money making them and then they crash. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. But that, those uh, robots, they're pretty cool. All right. I think that might bring us to the end. I'm just in time to go and watch the footy. How good's that? Yeah. Good it looks timing. Like a short show. <laughs> Yeah, I'll... I could probably give you a couple of headlines like I did last week, if you like. If you got some. Huawei's, got a, Huawei's ditched the notch by the look of it. They've got like a the top of their screen now is the top of their phone now is kind of just a rounded kind of top. Right. You'd have to bring up a picture of it. Maybe I can. Have see you got it. a model model number? Uh, let me just copy in. My browser's not being very friendly today, but um, where's the uh. Where's the? Where are you? If you, oh, I can't do it out, I can't copy out of the chat. If you got a model, I'll bring it up. A messenger. You got messenger, haven't you? Yeah, not open. Oh. Um. So what was it? What what phone was it? Well, you can do it in Zoom chat. Yeah. No. What <laughs> what phone was it? Yeah, I just pasted in Zoom. It's a Huawei phone. I'm just yeah. in Zoom now in the chat. We know in Zoom. Um. It's a, it just says it doesn't say it just All says right. Huawei nixes the notch well, with let... uh, a sleek new smartphone design. Yeah, where they and they've patented it. So I don't know if you can see it in the link, but it's kind of like a so the notch is it's like the screen is square at the top, but they've just got like a rounded top over the phone. Right, so you can imagine like a just slightly rounded, so they can fit their cameras and everything up top, but the top of the phone's. Yeah, some of the old phones used to be around. You'd have to bring up a picture. Yeah, um, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Right, there, there go. we go. Oh, oh, I, see. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, so the camera and all that is sort of right at the top. Yeah. Yeah, so the screen... Okay, so the notch doesn't impede on the screen at all. The Yeah. No. Okay, so the screen is a whole rounded rectangle. Um, mm. And, yeah, and the, the, the outside... the Around the outside is a thin plastic except for the top where it's raised curved raised and then yeah or the camera and whatever else sits in there the earphone or whatever mm. the speaker yeah right but I kind of like that I don't know why they didn't do that in the first place I suppose they tried to get rid of that section on the, on the phone full stop didn't they on every phone everyone's mm. tried to get rid of it yeah yeah and they, they just weren't be weren't able to were they but this, no. you know, that looks all right. I don't mind that. I reckon that looks good like that. I, I kind of like it. They've been bringing out a few good phones, I hear. Haven't they? But everyone's so hesitant with, with Huawei because mm. of the Huawei, however you pronounce it, because of, didn't they say, it, it, interference from other countries or something? Or just yeah, well, there's a story this week. I think it might have even been today. Uh, uh, I can't remember the people involved, but it was America warning England about getting into bed with Huawei. So, mm. um, there's, I don't know, who knows? I don't know. But, you know, like... Mm. Well, it's alleged that they've got back doors into the um, the government uh, offices mm. back in China, so that they can listen in and, and and see what you're doing. That's alleged that that's what what's what everyone's complaining, what everyone's worried about. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's going on. Like, and I'm not saying it's bad China. I'm I'm sure everyone's doing it. Whoever makes yeah. a phone, everyone's got listening devices going on somehow. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, any more, Jordan? Yeah. Um. Epson's Epson's new augmented reality glasses that can plug into your phone. I just put that into your Zoom chat as well. There's a oh. picture of that there. So yep. the augmented reality glasses that actually plug into your phone. That sounds pretty cool. Yep. All right. I haven't read the article. It's just a headline. So. Right. Well, let me get uh, this. Epson has a new pair of augmented reality glasses on the market, and while they're not meant for everyday wear, they still they're still supposed to be more convenient than their predecessors. All right. Let's have a look at these things. Is this the Epson Maverio BT300? Yeah, glasses connect to your Android smartphone for or a Windows PC over USB-C. Unlike early Epson's Maverio product, which plugged into a custom Android controller box. So they look like so they're five hundred bucks, and they'll ship them out in June this year. Five hundred. They don't look too bad, I suppose. They're very futuristic. That's looking. probably five hundred US, I imagine. So I call it seven hundred. Mm. Yeah, that's but pretty. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I haven't tried augmented reality. I reckon it'd be awesome. Yeah, they look a bit like the Google Glass, just with a bit of a frame, though. Yeah, I've seen the augmented reality videos for Microsoft, 
for for their um, augmented reality, but I've never used it. Mm. Yeah, right. No, that's pretty cool. Have you ever tried augmented reality? I haven't. Well, have you, Joe? No. I think Joe no, did I at some tried, thing. I haven't tried augmented reality, but I have tried virtual reality, and that's pretty good. Yeah, right. Well, virtual reality is cool because it takes you into the digital world, but the augmented reality brings the digital world to yours. So it's kind of an opposite. Mm. I reckon it'd be awesome. Like the Microsoft videos when they when they release their augmented reality on YouTube, yeah. they show you all these demos of how they're walking on, you know, walking on Mars and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah it's pretty it's cool. Like, it's pretty cool. Or you're walking around your house and you can watch a big movie and you just draw draw a big screen on your wall and then watch the movie. You know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. I it really is. love the idea of augmented reality. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. And uh, Google reveals it's working on a foldable phone. Or oh. Google reveals it's working on foldable phone prototypes, so they've got one. They're planning one. Uh, what else is there? Fastest computer in the world uh, is on the heels of the U.S. government announced in March that the first U.S. exascale, if that's nice. so, computer is being built um, just outside Chicago and is coming in 2021. Right? Is that this? Uh, is I'm going to the... send you another link. No, nah, it's all right. This was, yeah, oh yeah, this is recent. So the fastest computer was being built in Tennessee coming 2021. Uh, yeah, Chicago, that's it. This is the link. Yeah, yep, that's right. Same one. Yeah, cool. So uh, I haven't read the article, just reading the headlines. <laughs> yeah. The company is building a supercomputer named Frontier. I wonder where I got that from. Uh, I think it's made, AMD's making the chipset on that, if I remember right. Yes, yeah, so I think, right. yeah, the, the AMD's got their logo, so you're probably right there, Joe. Uh, I wonder how much that's going to cost. Yeah, an arm and a leg, probably. Here we go. The contact development awarded the developer Frontier a value of more than six hundred million dollars. A perform, a, it's, it will boast performance greater than one point five exaflops. <laughs> there you go. Everyone likes a good exaflop every now and then. Yeah, good exaflop. I think I like the word better than the actual meaning. Yeah. Ex- exaflop. That's what I do when I come home from work. <laughs> All right. Into the couch. Is that it? Um, even Samsung, uh, what's this? Uh, even Samsung has no idea when the Galaxy Fold will ship. So all this talk about the Galaxy Fold and they've, they're, they were going to delay it. Now they still don't even know when it's coming. So there's a lot of people that have pre-ordered the, the Galaxy Fold and, and are waiting and they still don't know when they're going to set an official release date, obviously because of the problems with the, the screen that they had and the collecting dirt in behind the mm. getting like dust and stuff on the back of the screen and the hinge. Yes. Um, and Microsoft offers software tools to secure elections. So they're building, uh, with three other companies, they're building some sort of, or they want to build some sort of software to run elections securely and so we can finally have elections online. That would be good. Yes. Yes, that would be good. There's a, there's a story there by the look. Yeah. Yeah. Make it so nice it's kind easy. of about it. Yeah, it's kind of about it. Yeah. There's another headline: Can AI help stop the bee extinction? We don't want to lose our bees, but oh, no. it's another. One. But hmm. maybe AI can. I didn't read that article. Yeah, just a few headlines because I didn't get ready for stories. But, uh, it's all right. Good, no but... problems. All right. Well, let's... the election not far away. I'd like to go back and read that article. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, our election is oh, on everyone's mind. <laughs> Saturday week, the big one. See, see what direction we're going to go. I think there's a bit of a difference this this time around, isn't there, between the two? Um, probably. I couldn't pick it this time, you know. I really couldn't. And but, I think both sides are as bad as each other at times. Some have good, and both sides have good policies, and both sides have bad policies. Mm. If they could just, if we could just make, make one, them, yes, merge, the merge both, them together, probably be happy. Yeah, probably be good. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, then. I usually just vote for. Who, I usually vote for anyone that's not wearing an Apple Watch. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's a, that's good. <laughs> Everybody votes for, you know, silly reasons. Why can't I do that? I know that Turnbull used to wear used to wear an Apple Watch, didn't he? I vote for them. I'll vote for anyone that's not wearing brown shoes. Brown yeah. shoes. Yeah, that'll like be... that kind of works. You could yeah. do that. Yeah, or a brown um, tie. If I see a brown tie, they're out. Not voting for them. They're out. They're out. I don't like Brian. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get out of here because the footy's on. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I'm sure someone will get offended for that comment, but, yeah, whatever. That's life. Uh, that's life. That's, that's life. Uh, all right, cool. Good. 
Well, so, yeah. yeah, thanks. So think... It's a short, 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 uh, short show tonight, mate. No, no, went for an hour. We're, we're on yeah. time. Yep. I think my my computer's been crashed for the last ten minutes. It's it's yep. kind of been saying seven forty five ever since, and there's oh, just yeah. a you picture frozen. of me smiling on the screen. We're and just... all I can hear is you. We're just looking at a picture of you just frozen in time, Jordan. Just that's just how that's you right. Are. Yep. All right. Well, let's get out of here so Jordan can put that little computer to, to rest. Uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming in. Great stories, as always. Hey, thanks, Glenn. Thanks for having me. Get onto Mark's uh, playlist. You'll find some good songs in there, I bet. There's a lot of work in yeah, that. Yeah, love the 80s. Yeah, a lot of work. Well, the thing is, I don't use, I don't use uh, it, um, what's it called? I don't use it. Spotify? Yeah. yeah Spotify right. is great. Absolutely great. I, I would still put Spotify on top of all the others still to this day. What do you use, Joe? Then, I, then I've got to pay two subscriptions. I've got to pay Spotify subscription and I've got to pay the um, the Google Music subscription. Oh, right. well, you get the Spotify for free. You can do the free version. Yeah, you just got to have the ads and you can't download anything. Yeah. You get ads every three oh, yeah. songs, but you can create an version. account and listen to the music. Free version. The ads, mm. yeah. All right, so go follow Mark on the on the Spotify. He'd really love that. And uh, we'll see you all next week for another episode. It's just too, it's too many subscriptions, isn't there? There is deezers and like even like you were saying this last week. Like you know, we've got the Disney com- the Disney TV coming out, and you've got Netflix, and you've got you know, and then too many. Um, HBO and all these different services, and you can't too much, yeah. too many, too many. All you right. just need someone needs to invent a company that you can go. All right. I want Netflix and Stan and Disney and all these things, and I want to pay one company to just sub it all to me. Yeah, well, you could well you get one of those fetch boxes and then just just pay to everyone and then just use it all in the one box. That's well, that's a topic for another time. But I think in America they have got that system where everybody has everything and you just pay one provider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds all right. Maybe maybe that'd be a good business. You know, like create a business where then that's what that's what the business does is provide pay providers. So you sign up with X Y Z ABC, and then you only pay one one thing of one. say hundred bucks a month, and then yep. the business and goes, you get and then you get all of them. Might be a good idea. Think about that one. All right. Mm. Okay. See you guys. See you next week. Right. Thank, thanks, yeah. listeners. Thanks, we'll viewers. Go. We'll see you then too. Okay. See you guys. All the best. Happy Christmas. <laughs>